Hi, I'm Kate Linthicum from the Los Angeles Times, and we are here today talking about a controversial skyscraper project uh, that would change the skyline of Hollywood that was approved by the Los Angeles City Council yesterday. It's called the Hollywood Millennium Towers. Um, it would add two skyscrapers, one 39 stories, the other 35 stories uh, near the intersection of Hollywood and Vine. Uh, lots of uh, condo space, bars, restaurants, a hotel. Um, it's provoked a lot of controversy in the neighborhood. Uh, neighbors are worried about what it would do to their, uh, to their views and also what it might do to traffic as well as uh, they've raised concerns recently about this site's proximity to an earthquake fault line. Um, I'm here with Michael Hiltzig who has written about uh, this topic and he is going to, to explain to us what, what's been some of the, the, the biggest controversy around traffic. What are, what are people worried about and, and who are raising these concerns? Sure, well thanks Kate. Well of course this project is, is within a block of the Hollywood freeway. and Anybody who has been on that freeway knows that uh, it basically is one of the longest parking lots in the world. Uh, it's already overstressed. Uh, there are real problems with finding ways to uh, to add to its capacity, probably not possible. Uh, it, it's interesting that the mock-ups of this project that are produced by the developers show uh, a, a minimal amount of traffic uh, on that on that freeway, and that tells you a little bit about the problem. Caltrans, which is responsible for the 101, has been uh, trying to get the developers and the city to recognize. The, uh, the incredible amount of, of excess traffic that this project may put on a freeway that no longer, that it can't really absorb it at all. They, they, there have been talks, there have been discussions, but essentially there's no sign that the developers or the city recognize what a problem this may be. This may be. Developers say, well, it, once this project is built out, it may add maybe 150 cars to, to the freeway per day. Caltrans says that's ludicrous, that the impact is going to be much greater, there's going to be impact on the on-ramps and off-ramps and on the local neighborhoods because of this traffic. And that really tells you how little of the neighborhood's concerns are being addressed. So the neighborhood groups have organized, um, I, I, it's been surprising how, how sort of concerted their effort has been. They've raised money, hired attorneys. Um, I think there are 40 neighborhood groups that have come out and opposed this project. Um, another big concern that they've brought up in recent days has been the site's proximity to what is known as the Hollywood earthquake fault line. Um, and so this is something I've been reporting in the, in the last couple of days. What happened is uh, the, the developer is required to submit this large um, environmental review that, that talks about what their impact uh, of their project will be on the neighborhood. They included in their review a seismic report where they said, we are, are not close to this fault line, we are, are not at risk, there's no earthquake risk here. Over the last uh, several weeks and days, you've had independent geologists, including the state's top geologist, um, who works for the California Geological Survey, saying, in fact, it, it appears, according to maps, that this uh, project is directly on top of this fault. Um, so you have opponents now saying, not only is this going to add more traffic, but it's also unsafe. Um, what transpired in the city council meeting yesterday um, was the developer saying, hey, yes, you have maps that say this, but better than those maps, uh, we've ha had actual testing. We've drilled into the ground and we, we, our, our analysis proves that this isn't actually on top of a fault. Um, the, the city council, which voted 13-0 you know, to approve it, said uh, we're going to wait for our own um, city geologist to decide. So what, what yesterday's uh, hearing did was give this developer the right to build at this site and the right to build larger than zoning restrictions allow. Um, but before any construction actually begins, the developer will have to get permits approved from the Department of Building and Safety. And as a part of that process, uh, city officials say, the developer will have to prove that this is not on top of a fault and that it's a safe thing to build. So, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I think you put your finger on uh, one of the problems here is that the process that this project has gone through, in fact, the process that all mega projects go through, is that the idea, what the developer really wants is to get a stake in the ground, that is, to be operating 
from a, a position of strength. Now he's got approval from the city council, and then if uh, if the seismic studies come in and they're negative, well, they they're going to have uh, a higher higher hill to climb to to be heard and and to be recognized. Right. One of the points that I made in, in my column about this project is that this whole thing really tells you how valuable CEQA is. And that's the California Environmental Quality Act. That's what gives communities like Hollywood a chance to really get uh, get a hearing, not merely from a city council that may be inclined to approve something that looks like it's, it's going to be a, a, an economic boon, uh, but from... Uh, from state agencies uh, and really from the courts, and and I think if uh, if if this project sort of uh, runs to form, what we're going to see is an effort in court, a lawsuit from the community, from all these community groups, to invoke CEQA to say, look, this environmental impact report. Well, it was written by the developers, right. so they're naturally going to be inclined to to minimize the uh, the environmental impact, whether it's traffic. Or seismic issues, or uh, or or any other impacts on the community. Right. So they really need an, an independent, uh, uh, disinterested party to take a look and to determine whether that environmental impact report really is fair, really is adequate. We right. Already know and the developer, Caltrans of course, they the, think the developer that has in terms of traffic studies that it's not, and we're going to hear a lot more about that. Right. So the opponents to this project have 30 days to decide if they're going to sue. Um, we will be following it, of course. If you have, uh, if you want to do more reading about this, you should check out LA Times. Um, we've been writing about it, and will be. Thanks.